going to go right into the word of the Lord on tonight. Um, we've been talking about the principle of praise. And uh, I was going to go into another principle, but I thought it would be befitting to close out the principle of praise with um, seven Hebrew words for praise. Seven Hebrew words for praise. So we're going to close out our principle of praise and give you some additional definitions of praise. I told you that it's so important that we remain in the posture, in the posture of praise. How the scripture says in Philippians 4 and 4, to rejoice in the Lord. We have a responsibility to rejoice in the Lord. He said, and again, I say, let me emphasize, again, I say, rejoice in the Lord. I told you how praise, the word praise in the King James Version is mentioned 213 times. And also that Hebrews 13 and 15 says, by him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise unto God continually. That is the fruit of our lips giving thanks unto his name. I also told you it's important that we praise God in every season for every reason. Amen. And how 1 Thessalonians um, 5 and 18 says, in everything give thanks. Not necessarily for it, but in it. That we would continue to give praise to God regardless of whatever situation we find ourselves in. And everything give thanks for it's the will of God concerning us in Christ Jesus. Amen. And so I want to talk about these seven Hebrew uh, words for praise. And for those of you that are taking notes, and I encourage you to do that, let me give you some information about these seven Hebrew words for praise. Amen. The first one, amen, number one is called Hale. It's H-A-L-L-A-L. The primary Hebrew word for hallelujah. Hallelujah is a universal praise for all nations. All nations understand the word hallelujah. Hallelujah is the highest praise that we can give God. Amen. It means to praise God to the highest. It means when we say hallelujah, it says we're making him shine. When we say hallelujah, it means to boast or we're boasting in the goodness and in the greatness of our God. When we say hallelujah, it is to show forth adoration and thanksgiving and gratitude unto God. When we say hallelujah, we're raving God. We're celebrating him with a loud voice. And so the first Hebrew word, amen, for Praise is holly. Amen. And the root word is hallelujah. Let's look at Psalms 100. Psalms 100, amen, gives us an example of this Hebrew word holly. Amen. I'm going to ask Elder Anissa, she would help me tonight if she would read Psalms 100 in its entirety, beginning at verse number one. The Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. The importance of us making noise unto the Lord. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. A joyful noise means, amen, a noise of excitement. A joyful noise is a noise of happiness. Amen. Read, woman of God. He said, all ye land, every nation, every tongue, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Everybody, all ye land, he is worthy of it. Amen. He should be glorified. He should be praised. He said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. We're making this noise unto the Lord. All ye land, every nation, every tongue, every kindred, every language. I told you how Hallelujah is a universal word for praise. And so he says, regardless of whatever situation you may be in, whatever you may be going through, he says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All you, everybody, read. Serve the Lord with gladness. He said, then I want you to serve the Lord with gladness. Be glad 
about serving the Lord. Be happy about serving the Lord. Be glad about your relationship, your commitment, your dedication, your devotion unto the Lord. Read. Come before his presence with singing. Then he said, come before his presence. Amen. And when you come, amen, come with a song. Amen. From the fruit of your lips. Read. Know ye that the Lord, he, he is said, God. He said, don't you know that the Lord, he is God. Read. It is he that hath made us. It is us. he that hath made us. Amen. We are his people and we are the sheep of his pasture. Read. And not we ourselves. Yes. Read. We are his people. People yes. And the sheep of his pasture. Read, woman of God. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Yes, read. And into his courts with praise. Come on. Be thankful unto him. Be grateful. Be thankful unto him. And bless his name. And bless his name. For the Lord is For the good. Lord is good, yes. His, his mercy is everlasting. And his mercy is everlasting. You know we don't deserve his mercy. His mercy is everlasting, read. And his truth endureth to and all generations. And his truth endureth unto all generations. So everyone should make some noise unto the Lord. Give a hallelujah. Give a shout. A high praise unto the Lord. Let's read Psalm 113, verse 1 through 3. Psalms 1. 113 verse 1 through 3. Praise ye the Lord. Here we go again. The word praise here is holly. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise or sing hallelujah. Praise hallelujah unto the Lord. Read. Praise, O ye servants of all, the Lord. All you servants of the Lord. Read. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Read. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yes. From this time forth. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth, from this moment forward. Read, woman of God. And forevermore. And forevermore. And forevermore. And so here we see, amen, this definition for the Hebrew word, amen, hale, which is hallelujah, which is the universal praise for all nations, which means give God the highest praise, that we owe God the praise. And when we say hallelujah, it is the highest praise and that every tongue, every nation should give God the high praise. Then the second Hebrew word is yada. That is Y-A-D-A-H, Y-A-D-A-H, yada. The root word here is a verb. It means to extend your hands. And so, amen, there is a praise called yada, which means to extend your hand, to throw your hands out, amen, and begin to lift them unto the Lord, amen, and to bless the name of God. Amen, let's go to Second Chronicles. Chapter number 20, we're going to see a yada here. Amen. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse number 21. Somebody need to extend your hands right now. Amen. And shout yada unto the Lord. Read woman of God, second Chronicles 20 and 21. And when he had consulted with the people, uh -huh. he appointed singers unto the Lord. When he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord. Read. And that should praise the beauty of holiness. And that they should praise him in the beauty of holiness. Read. As they went out before the army. Read. And to say, uh -huh. praise the Lord. And to say, praise the Lord. Read. For his mercy yes. endureth forever. Amen. Extend your hands when you go out. Amen. And say, praise ye the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. Let's go to Psalm 63 and 1. We're going to see here another praise. Amen. That means yada, amen, which means extend your hand to the Lord. Psalm 63 and 1. Read that, woman of God. Oh, God, mm -hmm. thou art my God. Yes. Early will I seek thee. Yes. My soul thirsted for thee. Uh-huh. My flesh longed for thee. Yes. In a dry and thirsty land. Yes. Where no water is. So even though I'm in a dry place, I'm going to give you praise. Even though, amen, I'm in a desert place, I'm going to give Give you praise, read. To see thy power yes. and thy glory. Yes. So as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Look at here. Go to Psalms 107. Let's look there. Psalms 107 and 15. Psalms 107, verse 15. Read that woman of God. Amen. And the word of the Lord reads. Yes. Oh, 
that men yes. would praise the Lord. He says all that men, amen, all that men would praise the Lord, all that everyone would come together, amen, and praise the Lord, that we, we would give him a corporate praise because I can give him an individual praise because you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. And I don't know what the Lord has done for you. And so we give him an individual praise based on our personal relationship with him, knowing, amen, glory to God, what he has done for us. But then when we come together, we give God a corporate praise. That means my praise, your praise, his praise, her praise, our praise come together. And he says, all oh, that men would praise the Lord, would give him a yada. Amen. Read. For his goodness. Amen. Praise him what? For his what? Goodness. For his goodness, read. And for his wonderful works to the children of men. He says, and for his wonderful works to the children of men. And so as we come together and we give God praise, we extend our hands unto uh, the Lord and begin to give God praise. Amen. Glory to God. Humbling ourselves and giving God praise. Amen. So that is the yada means to extend your hands. Amen. Outward to the Lord. Amen. Then the third Hebrew word is Toda, which is T O W D A H, T O W D A H, which literally means to lift your hands. One means to extend your hands, and then Toda means to lift my hands in a sign of surrenderance and adoration unto the Lord. Glory to God. If you can read, Amen, woman of God, Psalm 50. Psalm 50, verse number 14. We're going to show you a toda. Glory to God. Read. Offer unto God thanksgiving. He said, offer unto God thanksgiving. Offer unto God praise. Amen. Give him a toda. Lift your hands unto the Lord as a sign of surrenderance unto the Lord. Giving him praise. Read. And pay thy vows. Pay your vows. Read. Unto the most high. Amen. Pay your vows unto the most high amen amen pay your vows you made a promise to the lord pay your vows to the lord amen let's look at psalm 50 and verse 23 Who, psalm 50 verse 23 whosoever whosoever offereth praise whosoever offereth praise whosoever offereth up a told i read glorifieth me god said when you do it you're glorifying me when you extend your hands up to me amen you are glorifying me read and to him mm -hmm. that ordereth his conversation my god read all right will i show thee the salvation of god amen he said i'm gonna show you the salvation uh of god amen and that is a toe down then the fourth Hebrew word, amen, for praise is Shabbat. Shabbat, amen, that is S-H-A-B-A-C-H. S-H-A-B-A-C-H. It means to shout. And so when you say, let's Shabbat the Lord, I'm saying everybody in here, amen, let's give God a Shabbat. That means, amen, we are to give him a loud shout in the house amen we are to open up our mouth glory to god and scream unto the lord to give god a shout amen to address him amen when we're shouting we're saying amen he is triumphant and because he is triumphant amen we are triumphant because we are in him glory to god amen so when you're shouting and some people also say not only are you shouting when you give god a shabbat but you're clapping your hands at the same time they say you're confusing the enemy when you're shouting and clapping your hands glory to god let's look at psalm 47 and 1 oh clap your hands look at here oh clap your hands amen glory to god read all ye people. All ye people. Everybody, clap your hands wherever you are right now. Come on and begin to put those hands together. Clap them like you're slapping the devil upside his big old head. Come on here. Clap them a little harder. Glory to God. He said, clap your hands. Shout. Open your mouth and clap your hands. All ye people. Read. 
Shout. Then he says, shout. Give God a Shabbat, read. Unto God. Unto God, read. With the voice. Woo, with the voice. Of triumph. Of triumph. So he says, and then when you're clapping your hands and you're shouting, you're giving God a Shabbat. And then you're giving God a praise. You're clapping your hands and you're shouting. And then because your God is triumphant. And because he's triumphant, you are triumphant in him. You are not the victim. You are the victim because greater is he that is in you my God than he that is in the world touch your neighbor and said neighbor you are not the victim you are the victor come on and give him a Shabbat open your mouth and shout unto God you shout at everybody else but you need to shout and give God the praise hallelujah glory to God let's look at Psalm 145 Shabbat. Everybody say Shabbat. Mm. Shabbat. Amen. Let's look at Psalm 145, verse number four. One generation. Woo! One generation. Shall read. praise the works to another. Yes, he said, one generation shall praise and shall give a Shabbat. Amen. Read, woman of God. And shall declare uh -huh. thy mighty act. He said, one generation shall praise, shall give you Shabbat. Amen. The works of another and shall declare your mighty acts, all of the great things that you have done. Let's also look at Isaiah 12 and 6. Amen. Let's go to Isaiah 12 and verse number 6. Amen. Another definition here. Amen. Or another example here for the word Shabbat. Read. Isaiah 12 and 6. Praise be to God. Amen. Amen. Read, woman of God. Cry out. Cry out. Look at here. Cry out. Amen. You know, I'm not a quiet person, even by nature, glory to God. Amen, amen. But I love to be in the presence of people that don't mind giving God the glory. I, I love being in the presence of people, amen, who are not timid and shy when it comes to giving God the glory. I am a radical praiser because when I just think, of the goodness of Jesus and what he's done for me. I don't have to be pumped or primed, amen, but I would just give God the glory. When I think about how I was shot and left dead in the street, amen, but God saved me, amen. When I think about, amen, glory to God, all the things that have happened to me, how I was strung out on drugs, but God had mercy on me when others died, amen. I just begin to think, let me tell you something, no wonder the apostle Paul, amen, told King Agrippa, I think myself happy. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. When I just begin to think about God, I get happy. Amen. Glory to God. Read, woman of God. Cry out and shout. Cry out and shout. Read. Thou inhabitant of Zion. All the inhabitants of Zion. Read. For great is the Holy One. Great is the Holy One. Great is your God. Read. Of Israel. Oh, yes. In the midst of thee. He said, cry. Give him a Shabbat. Clap. Open your mouth and shout loud because your God is great. He said, you serve a great God, and he deserves great praise. I said, you serve a great God who deserves great praise. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, he deserves great praise because he is a great God. Touch your other neighbor and say, neighbor, Come on, he deserves great praise because he is a great God. And so he says, give him a Shabbat. Open your mouth and shout. Clap your hands and bless the Lord. Amen. Praise God. I'm glad I don't serve a God that's nervous. Come on here. Thanks be to God. He wants to hear the praise. The Bible said that the angels in heaven are crying, holy, holy, 24, 24. Holy, holy is the Lord. Lord our God, that the whole earth is full of his glory. Do you know you and I 
We are a manifestation, amen, glory to God, of the glory of God. And we're supposed to show forth the glory of God in the earth. Hallelujah, Jesus. Ask your neighbor, said neighbor, amen, I see the glory, but tell me about your story. We need to tell people about our story. They see the glory. They see the anointing on your life. They see what God has done. You need to begin to testify about the goodness of God and the greatness of God. Get excited about God. Tell God to do it again in your life. Come on and clap your hands and give God praise. Hallelujah. So that's a Shabbat. Then the fifth, the fifth Hebrew word is Barak. It is Barak. It is B-A-R-A-K. B-A-R-A-K is the fifth Hebrew word for praise. It means to kneel down. Woo! To kneel down. Amen. And to bless God in an act of admiration, saluting him. Amen. I praise God. I bring myself down. Amen. Glory to God. And just begin to bless the Lord. Let's look at Psalm 95 and 6. Amen. Because when we kneel down, it represents, amen, worship. I praise him for what he's done, but I worship him for who he is. I praise God for what he has done, but I worship him because of who he is. Because he is the creatorial God. I worship him. Because he is Elohim, the creatorial God, the one that created the heavens and the earth. Amen. He is the one, so I worship him because of who he is. He's Jehovah Jireh, my provider. I worship him. I worship the many manifestations of who he is. Amen. And how he has revealed himself. We worship him because he's the great God. So let's look at Psalm 96. Let's go to Psalm, matter of fact, Psalm 95, verse 6. Psalm 95, verse 6. Oh, come, mm -hmm. let us worship and bow down. He said, come on, everybody. Come on, let's worship. Let's bow down. Let's barack the Lord. Come on here, read. Let us kneel before the Lord. Ooh, he said, let us kneel before him. Let us humble ourselves down before him. Let's kneel before him and let's begin to worship him. Have you ever been in a service, amen, and the service was so high? And then the next thing you see, the people of God just getting down on their knees, amen, and beginning to worship the, uh, the God of our salvation. What they're doing, amen, they're worshiping him, amen, amen, in the position of, a barack. They're kneeling down and giving him the praise and blessing him and giving adoration unto our God. So Psalm 95 and 6 said, oh come let us worship and bow down. That is the barack. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker. Let's kneel before the Lord our maker. Let's also look at 1 Chronicles. Let's go to 1 Chronicles uh, chapter number 29. We have another example here for Barak. 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verse number 20. Can you read that woman of God? Amen. And the word of the Lord reads, And David said to all the congregation. David said to all the congregation, all the people had assembled together. Read. Now bless the Lord your God. He said, now bless the Lord. Come on, rock the Lord our God. Read. And all the congregation bless the Lord God. And all the congregation, all the assembly of the people, they bless the Lord. They rock the Lord. They all begin to kneel down together. Look how powerful that is when you have all these people coming together and they're kneeling down before the Lord. Amen. And they are blessing God. Read. They bless the Lord God of their fathers. Yes. And bow down their heads. Ooh, they bow down their head. Amen. Another translation said, amen, they bowed down low, amen, and paid homage unto the Lord. Read. 
and worshiped the Lord. Yes, they worshiped him. Read. And the king. Yes, they worshiped the Lord. Amen. Amen. Our king. Amen. Let's also look at another um, definition here or another uh, area where the word Barak, amen, is very prevalent. Let's go to Psalms 103. Psalms 103, verse number one. Bless the Lord. Amen. If you can read that all the way to verse number five. Bless the Lord. Read. Oh, my soul. Oh, my soul. Read. And all that is within me. Uh Uh-huh. Read. Bless his holy name. Yes. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Uh Uh-huh. And forget not all his benefits. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Don't forget all of his benefits. All of the blessings of God. Things that we take for granted, like the last breath you just breathe. Things we take for granted, like our eyesight. Things we take for granted, like our hearing. Things we take for granted, like our heart just beating normally. Amen. We don't have to think about it. It just does it. Because God, amen, has did that. He has put it in place. Amen. Glory to God. And every organ, amen, has a function to it. But there are some people, amen, that have heart monitors on. They have issues. Things that we don't, we take for granted. Amen. He says, don't forget all of his benefits. All of his benefits. You're reaping the benefits. Your alarm clock didn't wake you up this morning. The finger of God touched you this morning, his love, and allowed you, amen, to see another day. Things that we take for granted, amen, glory to God. Somebody was killed in a car accident today, but God allowed you to make it to your place of destination, glory to God, but it didn't have to be that way. All of his benefits with the angels of the Lord that encamp around us and protect us and keep us, the blood of Jesus that cover us, all of his benefits, read, woman of God. Who forgiveth all thine iniquity. So not only are we to bless the Lord and not to forget his benefits, amen, but also he's the one that forgives all of our iniquities. I am so glad tonight, amen, glory to God, that I can worship him, amen, and barack him and humble myself before him, amen, and worship him because he forgives my iniquities. He forgives me, amen, when I don't cross every T. He forgives me when I don't dot every I. Amen, I'm so glad we don't serve an angry God. Amen, I came to tell somebody tonight that God is not mad at you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We need to thank God, amen, that he is a forgiving God, that he's a merciful God, that he would cast our sins, yes, our sins into the sea of forgetfulness and remember them no more against us. Come on here. We need to bow down and worship him. Read. Who healeth all thy diseases. Oh, he healed, and not only that, but he heals us from all our diseases. He heals us from sickness and disease. Amen. That he does not allow the enemy, amen, to take us out. Amen. Sickness and disease. I remember I had lung cancer. Amen. Glory to God. And when you hear things along that line, the enemy will start telling you, this is it. But he healed me. And I know somebody out there today, he's healed you of something. Even if he healed you in your mind, he's a healer. Read, woman of God. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Yes. Who crowned thee with loving kindness. He healed me, amen, and delivered me from destruction. Read, woman of God. And tender mercy. Yes. Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things. Who satisfied my mouth with good things. So Praise that, be to God. Read. So that thy youth is renewed like the eagle. Yes, so that my youth is renewed as the eagle. Amen. Um, the sixth, the sixth Hebrew word for praise is Zamar. Zamar. Z-A-M-A-R. Z-A-M-A-R. It means to pluck the strings of an instrument and then sing. Pluck 
the strings of an instrument. You know, God loves music. Come on here. He loves music. That's why the devil hates you so. Amen. <laughs> glory to God. Amen. Because Lucifer, glory to God, amen, was the worshiper in heaven. But he came, became lifted up in pride, amen, and he was cast out. And now we worship God. We took his place. Come on here. That's why when Jesus came on the scene, he said the father is searching. He's looking. He's seeking for those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. You have Take in the place of Lucifer and you are a worshiper. He had all the instruments on the inside of him. God loves to hear the sound of praise. He, he loves it when we lift him up. He loves it when we sing. Even if you're singing off key, come on here somebody. He loves to hear the sound of praise. He loves for us to worship him. So Zamar means to pluck the instruments, to play the instruments together and to begin to sing praise unto the Lord with joyful expressions unto God. Let's look at Psalm 21, verse 13. Read, woman of God, Psalm 21, verse 13. Be thou exalted, Lord, in thine own strength. Yes. So will we sing. So we will what? So will we sing. So will we sing, Reed. And praise thy power. And praise your power, Zamar. We're going to sing and we're going to praise your name. Let's also look at Psalm 57. Look at Psalm 57, verse 8 and verse number 9 as I prepare to close. Here's another example of of singing, amen, and playing the instruments unto God, giving him praise. Psalm 57, verse 8 and 9. Read that, woman of God. Awake up. Awake, read. Awake up my glory. Awake my glory, read. Awake psaltery and heart. Yes. I, these are instruments, read. I myself mm -hmm. will awake early. Yes. I will praise thee. Yes. Oh, Lord. He said, I'm awake early in the morning, and the first thing I'm going to do, amen, when I wake up is to begin to praise the Lord, read. Oh, Lord, uh -huh. among the people, yes, I will sing unto thee. I'm going to sing unto you. I'm going to give a zamar unto you, read. Among the nations. Among the nations. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. And then the seventh and final Hebrew word for praise is tehillah. Tehillah. It is T-E-H-I-L-L-A-H. T-E-H-I-L-L-A-H. -L -L -A -H. It means to sing loud. To sing loud unto the Lord. Sing hymns loud. Sing praise loud unto the Lord. Amen. Praise be the name of our God. So, woman of God, if you could read, let's see, some. 22 and verse number three psalm 22 and verse number three read that but thou art holy he said god you're holy read O thou that inhabitest the praises of israel yeah you inhabit you enthrone the praises of your people the praises of israel the praises of zion the praises of the redeemed of the Lord. Let's look at Isaiah 61. Isaiah chapter 61, verse number three. Isaiah 61, verse number three. Read that, woman of God. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Yes. To give unto them beauty for ashes. Give them beauty for ashes. Read. The oil of joy for mourning. Yes. The garment of praise. The garment of praise. For the spirit of heaviness. That is Tehillah. Give you praise. Amen. To sing and shout loud unto the Lord. For the spirit of praise, read. That they might be called trees of righteousness. Mm -hmm. The planting of the Lord. Yes. That he might be glorified. That he might be glorified. Amen. That he might be glorified. Let's look at Psalm verse, uh, Psalm chapter 9. 
Number nine, verse number 14. Read that, woman of God. And the word of the Lord reads, that I may show forth all thy praise yes. in the gates of the daughter of Zion. That I may, that I may personally do this, that they may see it, that it may be uh, exemplified in the presence, not only of God, but in the presence of his people. That I might show forth all your praise Read, woman of God. I will rejoice. He said, I'm going to rejoice. In thy salvation. In your salvation. I'm going to give you a tahila. I'm going to sing loud. Amen. Glory to God. And I'm going to give you praise. I'm going to give you praise in the presence of the people. Amen. So I thought that that would be befitting to close out the principle of praise with these seven Hebrew words for praise. Number one was holly. The root word is hallelujah. It is the universal praise. Wherever you go, it doesn't matter what language they speak. Everyone says hallelujah. It is the highest praise unto God. Number two was yada. Amen means to extend your hands. Then it was number three, toda, which means we go from extending to lifting our hands before God. Amen. A sign of surrenderance. Number four, Shabbat, which was means to shout with a loud tone unto God. It is the shout of victory, the, the shout of triumph. Number five was Barak, which means, amen, it's a time of worship when we kneel down before God and show adoration unto God. Show gratitude unto God. Amen. Glory to God. When we bow down ourselves before him. Uh, number six was Zamar, which means uh, we get the instruments. Amen. And begin to pluck the strings of instruments to use instruments in conjunction together with singing. Amen. And blessing the Lord. It is a joyful expression unto God. We hear the, hear the music and the voices singing uh, unto him. And then number seven, was Tehillah, amen, which means to sing loud, amen, glory to God, amen, singing hymns of praise, amen, enthroning God and giving him glory. It blesses the name of our God when we bless him and when we give him the praise. You know, we were created to give God praise. We were created, our life should be a praise unto God, amen. How we exhibit ourselves should bring praise unto God. Do you know you are a living epistle, a walking, living, talking, breathing Bible, amen, to be read of men. If they never pick up, amen, amen, the Bible and never open up the pages, amen, your life should exemplify praise unto God. Your life should be a worship to God. Our life, amen, should be a praise unto God. And we want God to get the praise out of everything that we do because everything we do should bring God glory. Because we are his people. Amen. We are the sheep of his pasture. Amen. And we are, amen, to give him praise. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless you tonight. Give you glory. That even in the midst of a pandemic, we can still give you praise. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. My God, and your praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Come on, everybody. Let's give him a corporate praise together and let's exalt him. And so, Father, tonight you said in all things to give thanks. Told us to offer up the sacrifice of praise. Now you've given us seven Hebrew words to remind us the different ways that we can offer praise unto you, God. And so we bless you even now for the privilege, for the privilege and the honor that we have to give you praise and it is our prayer that our praise would come up to you and that it would be as a sweet smelling fragrance as a sweet smelling fragrance in your very throne room in your nostrils that when we praise it would be a sweet smell that would come amen amen and come in the midst of your throne room and that God it would bring pleasure to your heart because we want to please you in everything that we do. 
Because God, we recognize it's in you that we live. My God, our life is wrapped up inside of you, God. Our identity is in you. It's in you that we live, move, and have our being, God. So we thank you even now for the privilege of praise. The privilege to be able to praise you and to worship you. In every season of our life, every day we wake up, every night that we lie down to give you praise and to thank you for being the good God that you are. Touch somebody right now. Somebody right now, Father, is feeling like I'm in a hard place. I'm, I'm dealing with some things right now. Maybe sick in your body, but I encourage you to give God praise because even as you praise him, and then he can release the healing on your body right now. Hallelujah. You might say I'm struggling right now, but I believe if you begin to praise God, and then he will break the struggle and cause a release to come up to you wherever you need that area in. God can do it. There's nothing too hard for our God. And so, Father, we praise you for that even now. In the mighty name of Jesus and all God's people said amen. Come on, clap your hands all over the building and give God praise.